Hi, this is Ed Pohl on the road again from our Airstream as we travel across the country. Some time ago, I received a call from somebody I've known for many years. And he asked me if I knew of the surveys that have been done uh, that identify what occupancy costs run for a law practice. What percentage of uh, gross revenue or net revenue did occupy, occupancy uh, take up? And I suggested to him that first, I really don't pay attention to those surveys. And I didn't have any at hand that I could pull out and tell him about. But secondly, it seemed to me that he was looking at the wrong questions. Uh, in law school, one of the things that I think we learn quite well is to identify the issues, not worry about the answers or solutions, because you can always go to the book. You can always talk to colleagues. You can always find ways of finding the solutions. But if you don't even see the issues, you're, you're lost to begin with. And I suggested to him, and he had been a classmate of mine in law school a number of years ago, I suggested to him that he was looking at the wrong issue. It's not so much how much or what percentage of revenue occupancy took, it was what were the components of the occupancy. And let me explain a little bit about what I mean here. I asked him how long did he want to continue to practice? Because I think that's an important element. If you're just starting out in your practice, you're going to take one approach as contrasted to being a lawyer for 20 or 30 years with maybe five, maybe 10 years left to practice. I asked him what style of living did he want to have in his office? After all, it seems to me that you are spending a lot of time in the office. Let me give you an example here. I know of no lawyer who's spending less than 8 to 12 hours a day uh, at the practice. And so here, you're spending so much time. One of the dreams we have is to, the American dream, is to buy a, a very nice home in a very nice area. So we might spend $200,000 or a million dollars, whatever the number is, as nice a place as we can get in as nice an area as we can find. But think about that. We pay, let's just say, a million dollars for this house. And we're spending, what, 10 hours there? Six to eight of them are asleep. We could be anywhere. So we really have two to four hours, maybe, of real enjoyment in this very fancy residence. And yet, we spend 8 to 12 or 14 hours every day, five, six, sometimes seven days a week, in our office. And generally speaking, our office never reaches anywhere close to the class, to the status, to the, the niceness, if you will, of our residents. I mean, does this make sense? And so I said to him, what standard of living do you want to have where you spend certainly more than a third, oftentimes more than a half of your entire time? Next, what image do you want to project to your clientele? Are you wanting to project the image of marble countertops? Or is um, uh, Formica okay? What's the nature of your clientele? Is it blue collar? or white collar? Is it the CEOs of you know, America's Corporate 100? What, what do your clients anticipate? What is the image that you want to project to them? Next, what's the convenience factor to your clients? If your clients are in the downtown of your city, you're going to have to spend more money than if you're clients are in the outskirts, in suburbia, or in the rural areas of your community. That's just, that, that goes without saying. So where are your clients, and how convenient is your location going to be 
to where your clients are. Next, I talked about this uh, recently. What's the proximity of your office location to your talent, your secretaries, your paralegals, your associates? And lastly, and I do mean this seriously, lastly is the convenience to you. So where is it that you live and what is the cost of the uh, real estate, if you will, the occupancy of your office space uh, close to your, your residence? All of these factors go into uh, the cost of your occupancy. And so interestingly enough, after I had this conversation, and of course the person on the other end, my former classmate, totally disregarded everything I said. And he called me back a few weeks later and he said, you know, I found out that the surveys show 12% is the right number for occupancy and I'm okay. I'm, I'm about 12% and therefore I'm going to renew my lease. I didn't have the heart to tell him that I had had a subsequent conversation with somebody I know who is very intimately familiar with these surveys. And I just, by happen chance, asked, what's the percentage on occupancy? And she told me it was substantially less than the 12%. The point here that I want to make to you is don't be governed by, don't be fooled by the statistics of surveys. They tend to be averages or means. They're not hard and fast rules for what you should be doing. You need to answer the questions that I've posed to you today. And based on your answers, then you can determine what the cost should be of your occupancy. And once you get that, then you can determine what your percentage is to the gross revenue. Remember, once you get yourself established in the location, when you increase your revenue, that percentage comes down anyway. So what you started with may not be the answer you're going to wind up with. Answer these questions. Don't worry about the percentage. Thanks again for joining us today.